Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. This is a paper discussion video, so get ready with this paper, and let's go through the questions and answers together. Question 1 is about an experiment that investigates how ascorbic acid concentration changes with apples ripeness. A says that the student selects apples that are 5 cm in diameter for the test, assuming that they have the same ripeness. You are asked to suggest why this may not be accurate. The size of an apple may not be related to or proportional to its ripeness. It is possible to have variation despite their similarity in size. Besides, each apple may ripen at a different rate. This is not a constant for the apples on the same tree. Lastly, the size and ripeness of apples may be influenced by other factors, such as their position on the tree and their exposure to sunlight. 2. Describe an improvement to the method for selecting the apples that would give more accurate estimates of ripeness. The best way is to measure the sugar content in each apple and use those with similar values. A biosensor can be utilized for this purpose. Other acceptable parameters include color, softness, and the age of apples. B wants you to sketch a graph according to the student's prediction. The x-axis should be the independent variable, time. The y-axis is the dependent variable, ascorbic acid concentration. The graph would initially increase, reach a peak, and then decrease slightly at the end. C is about dilution. In step 1, the student performs a dilution by a factor of 1 over 10. In this case, mix the stock solution with distilled water in a 1 to 9 ratio. So, adding 10 cm3 of 0.01 mol per dm3 dcbip with 90 cm3 of water will give you a new solution which is 0.001 mol per dm3. Step 2 is a dilution by half. You have to add an equal volume of the original solution and distilled water. In our case, we add 50 cm3 of distilled water and 50 cm3 of the stock solution. 2 shows you how to measure the concentration of ascorbic acid in a sample by using DCPIP. The greater the volume of DCPIP needed for the titration, the greater the concentration of ascorbic acid in the apple extract solution. You are asked to describe a method the student could use to prepare apple extract solutions and collect the results needed to show the changes in ascorbic acid concentrations as the apples ripen. In a design experiment question, you must describe the three variables, the necessary procedure, reliability, and safety precautions. The preparation of a control set is sometimes credited, so it is a good idea to include it. List down all the points you want to include, then arrange them in a logical sequence. In this investigation, the ripeness of apples is the independent variable, and the concentration of ascorbic acid is the dependent variable. We should take 5 apples from a tree on the same day. Then, keep them for 5 different periods, for example, 1 to 5 days. The apples are taken from the same tree. This is one of the control variables. Then, we will store the apples in the same conditions, for example, the same temperature in the same incubator. When each apple has been stored for the intended time, we will use it to prepare the extract. Remove the skin and seeds of the apple. We should use the same mass of apple flesh to prepare the extract. You can use a weighing scale to weigh them. It is a good idea to state the mass you want to use. Then, use a blender to blend the apple into juice. Filter the pulp and unbroken parts using filter paper or muslin cloth. We can now use the extract for the titration. You can use any other suitable method to crush and filter the apples. For example, using a pestle and mortar, then filtering with a filter paper. A fixed volume of apple extract solution is placed in a conical flux. The CPIP is added drop by drop to the apple extract solution until the blue color remains. This is the end point of the reaction. After each drop, sort the conical flux to ensure the solutions mix well. Then, Describe how the dependent variable is measured. We need to measure and record the volume of DCPIP used to reach the endpoint. 
This is done by reading the volume from the bottom of the meniscus in the burette. You can add that it should be at eye level. For each number of days, make 3 replicates. Then, a mean DCPIP volume is calculated for each of them. This is done to increase the sample size, thereby enhancing the reliability of the results. Lastly, we have to do a risk assessment. You must identify the hazard, state the risk, and describe the precautions taken. In this case, DCPIP is an irritant. We must wear gloves and goggles throughout the experiment. D wants you to suggest why Pearson's linear correlation was the more appropriate statistical test for this investigation. Pearson's linear correlation evaluates the linear relationship between two continuous variables. In this study, the independent and dependent variables are both continuous data. When the results are used to plot a scattergram, it suggests a possible linear relationship. Pearson's correlation can evaluate if the correlation is linear, while Spearman's rank correlation does not have this function. Lastly, this test is used when the data is normally distributed. In E, we have a graph that shows the mean concentration of beta-carotene in five different fruits. You are asked to evaluate a conclusion that states that apples are not a good dietary source of vitamin A. The command word here is evaluate. It indicates that marks will be given for suggestions both for and against the conclusion. You should discuss both sides in your answer. Let's start with the support part. The bar chart shows that apples have the second lowest beta-carotene concentration. This indicates that they are indeed not a good source of the nutrient. You can get one mark by quoting data to support this point. The data for apples have a smaller standard deviation compared to the three other fruits in the bar chart. The graph uses standard deviation to plot the error bar, not standard error. A small standard deviation shows that the spread of data for apple is low. This means the low value of apple is reliable. However, there are some aspects we can use to go against the conclusion. To make a more reliable comparison, the standard error should be calculated. We can use it to make error bars that shows the 95% confidence interval. It provides a comparison with greater confidence and reliability compared to the error bars made by using standard deviation. Besides, statistical tests such as t-tests should be used to compare the fruits two by two. It is also a more reliable method of comparison. Lastly, the sample size is insufficient to allow a broad conclusion like that. Only five fruits were tasted. We should not use the data to conclude that apples are not a good source of dietary vitamin A as they might be better than many other fruits not included in the investigation. In this question, we have an investigation comparing trypsin from two different species. A student used enzymes to break down gelatin cubes and measured the time it took for the reaction to occur. The independent variable is the type of trypsin. This is the variable that is manipulated to see the difference. Two types of trypsin were used in the test. The dependent variable is the time it takes to break down gelatin, and this is the result being measured. 2 wants you to state one other control variable apart from temperature and enzyme concentration. The pH of the solution should be standardized as an enzymatic reaction is affected by pH change. An enzyme can be partially denatured if the surrounding pH deviates too far from its optimum pH. The surface area volume and mass of cubes should also be standardized. These factors can affect the surface to volume ratio of the cubes, leading to a change in the rates of diffusion. Note that the size of cubes would not be credited as size is not a measurable word. Lastly, the substrate concentration must be kept constant for all tests. So, each cube must contain the same concentration of collagen. B shows the results. You are asked to calculate the mean and standard deviation for domestic pigs. Sums up the values and divide them by 12, you will get 131.1. 2 wants you to calculate the standard deviation. Since the sum of x minus x bar squared is already given, we need to divide it by the sample size minus 1 and then find the square root. The answer is 3.2. 
you should use the number of significant figures shown in the table. 3 is about the t-test used to compare the data. The calculated t-value has been provided. In biostatistical tests, we usually refer to the critical probability of 0.05 unless stated otherwise. This means we want to have a 95% confidence level in our conclusions. The degree of freedom in a t-test is calculated by n1 plus n2 minus 2, n are the sample sizes of the two datasets. In our case, it is 22. The intersection of critical probability and the degree of freedom indicates the critical t-value. In this case, the calculated t-value is greater than the critical t-value. This means the probability is smaller than 0.05. So, the null hypothesis is rejected. Since the null hypothesis says that there is no significant difference, we can conclude that there is a significant difference between the time taken for trypsin from Atlantic salmon and trypsin from domestic pigs to break down a gelatin cube at 20 degrees Celsius at p equals to 0.05. The difference we see in the mean values is only due to chance. 4. Suggest explanations for the difference between the activity of the enzyme trypsin in Atlantic salmon and the activity of trypsin in domestic pigs. At the beginning of the question, we have some information about the body temperature of the two species. So, it is safe to say that the optimum temperatures of these enzymes are very different. Salmon trypsin is adapted to colder temperatures. In other words, it has a lower optimum temperature than pig trypsin. The experiment was carried out at 20 degrees Celsius. This temperature is too low for pig trypsin, as their body temperature is around 38 degrees Celsius. So, salmon trypsin forms enzyme subject complexes at a faster rate than pig trypsin. There is a mark for AVP. For example, you can state that 20 degrees Celsius is closer to the optimum temperature of salmon trypsin. You can also explain why pig trypsin has low activity. That's all for today. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.